This video is sponsored by Fabulous. Early in my YouTube career, I made fun of a pickup artist who tried his luck in my home country, Hungary, and was foolish enough to write a post about it. It was a lot of fun, and following the demise of Andrew Tate, the time is right to perform another deep dive into the online menosphere. But this time, I don't just want to laugh at them, as easy as that would be, I also want to teach them how to behave around women, because they obviously have no goddamn idea. So put on your cringe protection suit, because we're diving in. When referring to the online menosphere, we mean a collection of online spaces where men give <coughs> dating advice to other men. Such advice can take many different forms. The importance of self-reliance, the benefits of adopting healthy habits, the damaging effects of Jewish intellectualism and activism on Western culture. That last article is from the website called Return of Kings, run by a guy called Darius Valizadeh, commonly known as Rouge V. He wasn't the only contributor, though. He had a whole roster of crazy people writing the most bizarre, evil, and or contradictory shit non-stop. But then Rouge found Jesus in 2019, more on that later. The reason I like Return of Kings is because of their honesty. They don't use euphemisms or try to hold back on their actual beliefs. They really put it all out there. Women are sentient livestock. Joel Osteen is the Antichrist. Feminism is a Jewish plot to stop you from getting laid. Degeneracy in the US will cause a civil war. The burden will fall upon masculine men, as it always does in times of war. People will revert to the most basic survival instinct. The soy boys will be busy hiding with the women in their basements or agreeing with whoever has the perceived power before proceeding to murder, rape and loot those that disagree with them. Hang on, the soy boys will start to murder, rape and loot? By your logic, wouldn't that make them gigantic primordial gigachads? Return of Kings is famous for lots of things, consistency not being one of them. One of their big themes on the site is Western progressive degeneracy contrasted by good old Eastern Europe with their traditional values and white societies. Four additional European countries to emigrate to if the West collapses. The West will fall because of gay rights and white genocide. France won't let me publicly call Africans the N-word. If Trump doesn't win in 2016, here's where we can emigrate. Alright? As an Eastern European myself, I'm curious which countries he thinks are better than the West. Serbia. <laughs> Oh no, I can already feel the mental illness just radiating from this post. But there is hope for these people. All they need to do is install another app next to Tinder, namely the app of today's sponsor, Fabulous. Fabulous is your digital coach, a happiness trainer if you will. It's the number one self-care app to help you build better habits and achieve your goals. Fabulous really helped me maintain my mental health as I keep track of current events and helps ward off the anxiety I get from looking at examples of American urban planning. Based on behavioral science, it helps you develop great, healthy habits and routines for a healthier, more productive and fulfilling lifestyle. The app will help you create your own rituals, these small steps that lead to big changes. The two ways to use the app are habit tracking and dedicated programs. In habit tracking, you can choose from 100 plus recommended habits or you can create your own. Fabulous then helps you build these habits with gentle reminders and content based on behavioral science. Dedicated programs will help you achieve your well-being goals over the course of several weeks. The new habits you pick up can be added to your daily routine if you so choose. And god, the illustrations are nice. It's one of my favorite things about the app besides the fact that its methods actually work. With the premium version, you can build and improve an unlimited number of habits in your routines and you have access to all programs and exercises. Start building your daily routine. The first 500 people to click the link below will get 25% off their Fabulous subscription. Thank you for checking out Fabulous. Ads like this help support what I do. And now, back to the program. Alright, so Serbia, according to whoever wrote this shit, level of English, medium. Difficulty of the local language, medium. Gun laws, lenient. Well, this is a bit concerning. Quality of women, high. The Polish girls of the Balkans. They like sex, give importance to their elegance and appearance, but don't send the ice queen vibe that Ukrainians and Russians can have. Uh oh, someone is insecure. Importance of religion, medium to high. Likelihood of a 50 year similar cultural collapse, low. In view of recent events, their worst decision would be to join the EU. European and global culture has already brought a lot of damage. Wait, European culture is a problem now? Also, you have a problem with with Western degeneracy and people fucking around, so you want to go to a more traditional, conservative country to fuck around? Male competition, medium to high. Decent foreigner value. As I said previously, Serbs probably have one of the highest level of game in Eastern Europe. Wow, that's a sentence I never thought I would see written. Turbo folk culture and recent bloody conflicts give them a bad boy head start by treating women as replaceable commodities and war spoils. <sighs> what? You heard it here first, folks. The Yugoslav wars and the Bosnian genocide turned Serb men into Real Giga Chads. Who the fuck wrote this shit? Jean Batov is a martial artist from the Viking stronghold of Okay. Czech Republic. Oh fuck, here we go. Quality of women, medium to high. Love sex, but less classy than Ukrainians or Serbians. Exposed to a lot of gringo seed since Prague turned into a tourist hellhole. Well, I'm sorry, Jean Batov. Aren't you yourself a fucking gringo by your own logic? Non native immigrant population, medium. Avoid the capital, especially if you cannot stand stack parties or pub crawls. Large number of foreign students. Weak nationalist sentiment. Oh yes, all those Westerners going to the Czech Republic to have 
fun and fuck women, am I right, Jean Batov? If you were just a bit less self-aware, you'd cease to be sentient. Male competition, low. Czechs are in majority low T and beta. Girls love gringos, but you will not be there first. No wonder it is a swingers, gave it to cock, hotspot. What? Likelihood of a 50-year similar cultural collapse? Possible. The xenophilic nature of the Czechs and their placid character could be their downfall. The xenophilic nature of the Czechs. The xenophilic nature of the Czechs. One of the most racist fucking countries in the whole EU, where only 40% of the population would be comfortable with a person of a different ethnicity being the leader of the country. I'm starting to notice a pattern here. In my older video, when Dollar Store Kingpin described Hungary as a Hungarian, I immediately knew he didn't really venture beyond inner city Budapest. And that's the same vibe I'm getting from this guy after having lived in Prague for three years. It's almost like these guys just wander around the tourist trap areas all day, angrily going through Tinder. No wonder they're angry. All that's left for normal men are rotten women, apparently. Nature has given humanity a roughly one-to-one -one ratio of adult men to women, but the most attractive women are being taken out of circulation to either join alpha male harems or participate in degenerate generate lifestyle choices. This leaves the average man particularly no choice in settling down with a mentally stable and cute woman in her prime. And then here's a magazine cover of a successful restaurant owner lady with dyed hair and tattoos, okay? In Islam, a man is able to marry four wives, which is what my wealthy Iranian grandfather did on his way to siring 24 or so children, that included my dad. The exact number is a mystery. He took away three women that an Iranian man of lesser means could have married, creating a societal imbalance, but that's nothing compared to what we have in the modern western world where a single famous man can command the sexual attentions of dozens if not thousands of women in their sexual prime, spoiling these women for normal men who don't have the ability to tingle their vaginas with the same intensity. What the fuck is he on about? Okay, so let me understand this. The western world is falling because men are becoming feminine soy boy beta cocks, but it's also falling due to an epidemic of titanic giga chats subverting society with their overwhelming masculinity. Well, which is it then? If western civilization is based on masculine values, wouldn't these Atlassian giga chats be the ones holding it up, with their genitals, presumably? If you think this makes no sense, you're right, it doesn't. Also, how can a single famous man spoil thousands of women in their prime? Rouge, just because a man is famous and lots of women lust after him or something, that doesn't mean those women are off the sexual marketplace. You can find famous people hot and date others at the same time. Unless your real problem is your insecurity that they might find someone else attractive beside you. At any rate, as you can see, the manosphere is an inconsistent, incoherent, convoluted, self-contradicting train wreck inundated by far-right ideologies. Has has it ever occurred to these motherfuckers that acting like a bonobo ape might be the reason why they keep encountering those rotten women? If you want to settle down with a mentally stable and cute woman in her prime, maybe you should start acting like a mentally stable guy in his prime? And maybe stop comparing women to dogs? The article features Instagram pictures of girls who look like your average gold diggers as example of rotten women. Personally, I never had to worry about gold diggers. A. Because I'm not a Middle Eastern millionaire. And B. I don't constantly posture as wealthy and powerful. All these dipshits keep posing with expensive cars, wads of cash, private planes and the like, and then wonder why they can't shake the quote-unquote rotten women? What sort of women would those pictures attract? The cute Eastern European treadwife wanting to settle down, or the gold digger looking to get in on your wealth? If you're out there on the dating field and the wrong people keep coming after you, the common denominator is you. Of course, the basic idea behind the pickup artist asshole aesthetic is that supposedly girls like assholes and reject nice guys. And it's all based on one big misunderstanding from high school, which I will now explain and clear up as promised. Women like the asshole and reject the nice guy is Menosphere 101. The alpha and omega of every pickup artist, MGTOW, Red Pillar, and so on. And it's based on a complete misinterpretation. Men usually experience the nice guy asshole dynamic in high school when the hormones start kicking in and sexuality is suddenly on the table. But in those teenage years, everyone is still figuring stuff out and have zero experience in dating or relationships. At that point, the assholes are far more successful with girls than the nice guys. It's the virgin versus Chad meme, but in real life. The asshole is cold, emotionally distant, talks down to girls, ignores their messages, ghosts them, and so on. The nice guy is always there, acts like the emotional tampon, puts girls on a pedestal, immediately responds to messages, keeps following them everywhere, etc. So why do high school girls like the asshole and ignore the nice guy? Because the nice guy is fucking boring. This is it. This is why girls prefer the asshole over the nice guy. Also, inexperienced high schoolers tend to misinterpret being an asshole as strength and confidence. Most women aren't after some walking parody of masculinity. They like confident guys who aren't boring. Being an asshole has nothing to do with it. In fact, beyond high school, being an asshole is actually a detriment. After all, nobody likes being around assholes. But don't take it from me. Take it straight from the horse's mouth. Let's read together from the introduction of Rushi's book, Bang. 
It started in the spring of 2001. I was 21 years old and spent my free time on the computer reading message boards or playing games. I had no skill with women and the ones I knew either used me for my brain to tutor them or as an emotional tampon to feel better about guys who didn't take their shit. I remember thinking how stupid the other guys were to treat such pretty and nice girls so poorly. Didn't they realize those girls will eventually get angry and stop talking to them? After a couple of weeks of hesitation, I finally asked her out on a casual date to the movies. She said she couldn't because she was very busy. Weeks later, I saw her around campus holding hands with another guy. Instead of listening to lame love songs like I usually did, for the first time I got angry. A lifetime of frustration and not getting what I wanted became focused on that one girl. I was bitter that I, a nice guy, was getting passed over for guys I thought were losers. So I started to ignore her. If I did end up talking to her, I would cut our conversations short. When she asked me to study, I would lie and say I was studying alone, only to have her stumble upon my study group late at night in the library. I started feeling good for treating her poorly. I hated her and everything she stood for, which was my failure with women. But then, something interesting happened. She started making a strong effort to gain my attention and favor. It was as if the harder I pulled away, the closer she would come to me. That was the first time I understood that changing my behavior could affect how girls reacted to me. Soon it became clear that interacting with women wasn't very different from the games I played with my nice guy friends, where changing tactics and strategies yielded different results. Right. So allow me to explain this whole women thing to you pickup artist types because you obviously have no idea. The secret to dating isn't being an asshole to women, it's about being a good guy with an edge. You are there for someone when they ask for help within reason. You're empathetic, but not let people use you as an emotional tampon. You don't put people on pedestals or look down on them. You treat them like equals. You respond to messages a bit later because you have stuff to do, but you never ghost people online or offline. You are confident, polite, nice, but not too nice as in a doormat. You don't wear your emotions on your sleeves so the other person gets to wonder a bit if you like them or how much you like them. This is exciting and it makes you not boring, therefore attractive to many. Notice how Rouge, by being an asshole, accidentally emulated many of these characteristics. He stopped dogging her with his affection. He made himself scarce. He stopped acting like a desperate orbiter. But the problem is, being an asshole is becoming less and less attractive as the years go by. Acting like some frat bro dumbfuck as a 40-year-old man might appeal to teenage girls or the quote-unquote rotten women, but anyone above the age of 25, especially the those vaunted cute trend vibes will increasingly find you pathetic. As people like Rouge keep doing this embarrassing manly man bit into their 30s and 40s, it becomes harder and harder to find people romantically interested in them. They think it's Western degeneracy, or feminism, or the Jews ruining women or something. But the truth is, they just repel any sane, adult, self-respecting woman by acting like high school assholes. Rouge V in particular had a very tough time with this. As the years went by and he was approaching 40, I imagine he got more and more lonely. His toxic attitude and chauvinistic far-right views repelled every woman from around him. Him. In that moment of hopelessness and vulnerability, as he stood there lonely with this emptiness inside, staring defeat in the face on all fronts, in 2019, Darius Walizadeh found God. Of course, he's still basically a Nazi, and now a proud member of the Russian Orthodox Church, go figure. Nowadays, he spends his time doing multiple hour streams on Odyssey. The bombastic frat bro is gone. All we see now is a defeated, broken man. He basically had the life journey of the High Sparrow from the Song of Ice and Fire. Consequently, Return of Kings has been on hiatus since 2019. And good fucking riddance, Jesus Christ. I guess what I want you to take away from this video is, first, pickup artistry is bullshit. Second, don't treat women as livestock. And third, being an asshole isn't attractive. Being confident, polite, and somewhat challenging is. Add a bit of humor and you're set. At the end of the day, be the person you'd want your children to bring home as their partners.